right you are learning 48 firewall and today i am going to cover match that how to configure nat in 48 firewall i have taken a lab in evng setup so this will be the 48 firewall that i will be configuring and from any of these computers i will be trying to go to destination server at the right side okay so before going to configuration let me quickly ask you that what is net and how does it basically work right so i'm just going to tell you the theoretical part let me minimize it and delete it NAT, you already know that it stands for Network Address Translation. And that NAT you can do in two places. You can do at the source site, it means that your source IP will be translated. Another thing you can be done doing at the destination site. It means that your destination IP will be translating. So this, when you're, you do NATing at the source IP or the source site, you call it as a SNAT. And whenever you are doing the NAT in the destination IP, then it is called as DNAT. So that will be basically happening at the destination site. And in every cases and in every scenario, we have three types of NAT these are very common and you might be knowing from the starting but if you don't know they are like static nat dynamic nat and the third one is pat that we also call it as port address translation okay so and that could be an here and test name as well there is no restrictions but uh, most of the time the nat type is used is snat that is static net we used to do one to one mapping okay let's configure that this first part in this session i will be doing source net and using pad basically okay and but i will brief you about the other two aspects this is the lab i will be using once again but before we go do it in the configuration, let me give you a demo or in fact tell you about the topology. What are these? So this is the source uh, destination server. That's I'm using it. But uh, that is not the actual server that I'm going to use. This is basically a Cisco router. And I'm using that as a server. Okay. Why I'm doing that? So that I can show you the destination translation because if i use some other type of things then it will be hard for me to show you that how the ip has been translated to the another ip otherwise i have to do the packet capture and all so for the simplicity i have do done that in the left hand side i have taken a switch and behind the switch we have multiple computers connected so in this lab i will be taking this vpc1 which is having the ip address 10.1.1 that will be communicating to this source server and i will be translating the ip address okay let's go to the configuration part this is my 48 firewall this is the cli but uh, i'm quite interested in the gui so i have keep it open like this okay so your dashboard opens here yeah, let me show you that this is my dashboard but i'm more interested in the nat part so if i want to configure nat there is no dedicated tab to go to the nats that is being configured under policy and objects and here you can go to the firewall policy once you go, go firewall policy you can create a new policy in order to create the nat but in my scenario i have already created a text policy this is here but in this case currently the NAT is disabled right there's no NAT configured under this policy so 
just select this and even if you go for the create new the concept will be similar okay so if i edit it you see the name so for the new test policy like new policy if you have clicked on the new policy then also the same options will be there you can give it the name incoming interfaces outgoing interfaces source and destination and the services here they were already so i have no, i'm not changing that one and we are very much focused about the nat the currently the nat is disabled i'm going to enable that so as i enable i see these option the very first option is use or outgoing interface address whenever this option is enabled to use outgoing interface address it means that if we translate so it will use this outgoing interface because the outgoing interface is this towards this server 20.1.1.20 will be used okay another way is if you don't want to use the existing interface you can use a dynamic pool so in that case you have to give some of the ip addresses that the your ip address will be translated to this ip address okay so i have one pool ready with me that's my pool so i will use that and if you see my pool here you see that i am using the ip address 192.168.1.1 okay so it means that ip will be translated whatever it will be the source ip it will be translated to 192.168.1.1 so there are two options if i go edit here or in fact two there are multiple options you can give an external ip address range it means that you can make it from 1.1 to 100 or 254 whatever you want it just depends on your range but i was interested just in one ip so i have just given first and last the same ip so only one ip will be used but you can use all these options as well let me cancel that and i will use my pool so I just clicked it and here it is populated. Another option is you can drag and drop from here to here. That's not a problem. No need to touch anything else as of now and just enable it. But uh, before doing that, let me show you that what is happening right now. Whenever I ping it from VPC1, basically it's from VPC1 to 20.1.1. .1. Let me see that is it pinging or not. Okay. So if I ping it, ping. 20.1.1.1 it is saying request timed out let me check it why it is happening and that could be because of the ports so right now the port 4 is configured here but my traffic is going towards port 3 okay so i will just change it quickly to port 3 so that it could work but if i do that my nat will also working but i don't want to show that okay so right now nat is disabled i do not enable nat but just a test policy okay and if i ping it here it is pinging but i want to show you that what is happening on that destination so this is a destination server that's basically a router but i will enable i uh, debug so that you can see what is happening So now whatever the ICMP packet will be coming on this server, you can view that. So let me ping it once again. And you see that the reply, echo reply is sent to source is 20.1.1 and it is sent to 10.1.1. It means that the actual IP of here 10.1.1 is achieved by this server and server is replying directly to 10.1.1. This is the case whenever I do not enable that. Okay, so now what I do, I just go to this test policy and uh, enable that NAT. I go here, enable NAT and use dynamic pool. And my dynamic pool was 192.168.1.1. 1 1. Okay, so this time the reply will be going to this IP. Let's see that. As I click OK, it is applicable instantly. There will be no change in the ping here. I ping it here as usual from VPC. But at the server side, you see that the destination IP has been changed to some other. 
okay so mm -hmm. let me show you this here oh my pen here here it is so my destination ip this time has been changed to 192.168.1.1 and before it was here it means that my destination server here don't know actual ip it doesn't know the actual ip that what was actual ip of the source and this is what is used whenever you use internet you are you whenever you are connected to the broadband you get a private ip address and you go to router your i packet go to the router that is translated that we do NAT, and obviously we are doing the uh, pat port address translation and then it is converted to the public ip and then it is going to internet so now you understand that what is happening that how nat is working in our fortigate firewall you can also check the logs on the fortigate you can go to here fortigate logs and report go to forward traffic okay so you see that lot of traffic is traveling but my focus is towards 20.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1. okay so i just click here double click in fact if i click it here you will see the source ip and the destination ip so i think uh, this was the packet whenever the source translation was not happening okay so i don't see at the source side there is a no nat here and this was the netted one yeah so this is the netted one so there are like two sessions this is the session whenever there was no net and i tried to ping and this is the case whenever net was happening so here the traffic you will observe that the source ip here is first one like that was your actual ip but on the firewall you translated it to 192.168.1.1 later on it was received to 20.1.1.1 that's why because at the firewall like your source ip became 192.168.1.1 and the destination ip remain same 20.1.1.1 so that's why you are seeing at the server that it is being it is replying to this address because it the icmp ping request was received on this so that's why it is replying to so that was like quite deep in the 48 firewall nat configuration if you have any question in the session please please feel free to ask me anytime how you are going to ask you have to write in the comment section if you have any question i will get back to you writing the reply okay meanwhile what i am doing i am live every saturday 8 to 9 pm ist you can join my live session and if you want to join my whatsapp group you can write on the comment i will share you the link to join the group all right otherwise you can also visit my website and uh, this is my website freshdeveloper.online that's on the first tab oh that's closed let me open it for you this is my website you can visit it as well you can get some of the free things here on the self-learning you can go ahead for this okay you see that 48 firewall checkpoint panel level two. you can just go through all these all right see you soon in the next video till that bye bye